Snowman Postman by John Cunliffe In the middle of January, it became still colder in Greendale. More snow fell. It began to melt. There was some rain. Then it froze again. It froze so hard that everything had a coat of ice. When Pat got up in the morning, he could not open the door of his van. He chipped at the ice with a kitchen knife, but he still couldn't get his key into the lock. He poured warm water over the lock and over the windows. It still wouldn't open. He held a candle so that its flame licked round the lock. Now the key would go in, but it wouldn't turn. He warmed his key on the stove in the kitchen until it was nearly too hot to hold. Then it turned in the lock and opened the door. Pat was on his way at last, but oh, it was so cold. Jess fluffed his fur up, and Pat wore his thickest scarf and gloves. On the way they saw Ted Glenn. He was busy chopping wood. He had no gloves and no scarf on. Pat stopped for a chat. "'Aren't you cold?' he said. "'Not a bit,' said Ted. "'There's nothing like a bit of chopping to warm you up.' At Greendale Farm, Peter Fogg was breaking the ice on the trough so that the cows could have a drink. "'I bet they'd rather have a warm cup of tea,' said Pat. "'I don't know what the milk would taste like.' said Peter, if we gave them tea to drink. Katie and Tom came running across the stack yard. You're too late, Pat, said Katie. Our postman's already here. Come and see, said Tom. They took him round the corner by the barn. There stood a snowman postman. He had coal eyes and mouth, a carrot nose, an old scarf round his neck, and a bag for his letters. Poor fellow, said Pat. He has no hat. He'll get a cold head. He can borrow mine, but only for a minute. He put his hat on the snowman's head. Now he looked much more like a real postman. The twins filled his bag with snowballs, and Pat made him a snow parcel. Large flakes of snow began to fall from the sky. "'Here come some more letters,' said Pat. "'I hope he gets them all delivered. "'I can't see any addresses on them. "'Now don't forget to make him a snow jess, <laughs> and a hat as well. "'I must be on my way, and I'd be too cold without my hat.' "'I'm going to make him a snow van,' said Tom. "'No, an ice van,' said Pat. "'That's what mine was this morning.' "'Pat took the letters in to Mrs Pottage, then went on his way. "'At Thompson Ground, young Bill was making a giant snowball. "'He had started with a small one. "'Then he had rolled it round and round on the grass. "'It grew bigger and bigger until it was so big that he couldn't move it.' Pat gave him an extra push with it. It rolled down the hill, picking up still more snow, and growing bigger. It hit the wall at the bottom and broke into pieces. There was a glove sticking out of one piece. So that's where my glove went to, said Bill. That was a piece of luck. I thought I was going to get into trouble for losing that. When Pat had delivered all his letters and parcels, he was glad to get home to his warm fireside. There was soon a good meal on the table. Then it was time for Pat and Sarah and young Julian to watch their favourite television programmes. Jess curled up by the fire too and had a cat nap. But after the news, Jess woke up, walked slowly across the room, mewed and scratched at the door. He wants to go out, said Sarah. Nay, Jess, said Pat. You don't want to go out in this weather, do you? But Jess did want to go out. He scratched and scratched at the door until Pat opened it. A cold blast of air blew in. Brrr, said Pat. Don't be long, Jess. 
It's cold enough to freeze your tail off. Jess ran down the garden path into the darkness. Where was he going? Perhaps to see if the mice had come out of their holes in the barn at Greendale Farm. Wherever it was, he meant to get there, snow or no snow. Julian went off to bed, and Pat read him a chapter from his favourite Moomin book. When Pat came downstairs again, Sarah said, Jess hasn't come back. I've just been out to look, and there's no sign of him in the garden. It's snowing hard, too. I do hope he's all right. The wind's getting up as well, said Pat. There'll be drifts by morning. It could get really deep. But I expect Jessie's in someone's barn, hunting mice. If it's too cold to come home, he'll find a warm bit of hay to curl up in for the night. Jess didn't come home that night. The next day the snow was very deep, and Pat couldn't get his van out until the snowplough had been along the road. They were all very worried about Jess. There was still no sign of him. I'll look in all the barns as I go on my rounds, said Pat, and ask if anyone's seen him. Somebody's sure to have spotted him. Everyone knows Jess in Greendale. The snow was deep everywhere, and the wind had piled it up into deep drifts in the fields. Pat kept asking about Jess, but no one had seen him. He looked in all the barns, but there was no sign of Jess anywhere. When he called at Thompson Ground, Alf was just setting out to look for some of his sheep. They were lost in the snow, and they would soon die if they didn't get some food. "'I wonder if your Jess is under a snowdrift like my sheep,' said Alf. All the farmers knew how the sheep could make a space under the snow, like a little snow house, and be quite safe in it for a time. They would huddle together to keep warm, and the walls of snow would keep the cold wind off them. But they had no food under the snow, so the farmers had to find them quickly. "'I'll come and give you a hand looking for your sheep,' said Pat. "'I can't deliver any more letters until the snowplough gets up here. "'That top road's sure to be blocked.' "'Right,' said Alf. "'Thanks, Pat. Let's get going, then.' They took one of the farm dog's floss to help sniff out the sheep. They also took a long, thin rod and a spade each. The snow was frozen hard, and they could walk on the top of the drifts without sinking in. The snow was so deep that you could walk right over the tops of the walls. Up the hillside they went. The icy wind blew and made their noses and cheeks sting. When they came to a place where Alf thought the sheep might be, they stopped, whilst Floss ran about sniffing and snuffling at the snow, pushing her nose into any hole or crack or cranny by walls and trees where the sheep might have sheltered. Then Alf and Pat gently pushed their long rods down into the snowdrifts, feeling for the snow cave the sheep could have made. They tried four deep drifts in this way, but they had no luck. They were just going to turn back to the farm when Pat said, What about the old barn in the bottom meadow? They might have gone there for shelter, then been snowed in. There's just a chance, said Alf. We'll have a look there, then we'll go home for a hot mug of tea. I think we've earned it. The old barn had no roof. It had blown off one windy day that Pat remembered only too well. They tramped across the snow. They were getting tired and cold. Just one more place to look, then they could go and get warm. The walls of the old barn were open to the snow and to the wind. The snow had blown in and piled up inside just as deep as it was outside. Floss sniffed and wagged her tail. I think she smelt something, said Alf. But it might only be a fox. Flossie's tail went faster and faster. She certainly found something, Alf went on. Let's try the rods. Alf and Pat carefully pushed their rods into the deep snow, down and down as far as they could reach. 
Pat's rod felt different. One moment he was pushing the rod through the snow, then it went more easily. Perhaps it had come to a space under the snow. Perhaps it had come to the snow cave made by the warm bodies of the sheep. Come and try here, said Pat. I think I can feel something. Alf came to try in Pat's place. Yes. Yes, it was the same with Alf's rod. I think we've found something, said Alf. We'd better dig it out and have a look. They dug down into the drift. It was hard work, but it made them warm. Floss ran about in the snow, yelping with excitement. Far down under the snow, in a corner by the wall, Pat uncovered a hole in the snow. They stopped digging. A woolly nose came to the little gap and sniffed. Thank goodness, said Alf. We've found them. They had to dig more slowly and carefully now. They didn't want to hurt the sheep with the sharp spades. They made the hole bigger and bigger until it was big enough to get the sheep out. They could see more woolly bodies cuddled together under the snow, and they could feel how warm they were. The sheep didn't want to come out. It was warmer under the snow than it was out in the cold wind. Alf had to pull them out one by one. There must be about ten of them in there, said Alf. But Alf and Pat were very surprised when they saw what else was in there with the sheep, keeping warm amongst their woolly coats. There was a small black and white shape there, and it uncurled and ran to Pat when it saw him. Jess, said Pat, it's my Jess, dear little Jess. Whatever are you doing here under the snow? Are you all right, Jess? He picked Jess up and tucked him inside his warm overcoat. Well, I never, he said. Jess began to purr. He snuggled under Pat's coat with just his nose peeping out. He soon felt as warm as toast. I wonder how you got here with Alf's sheep, said Pat. I wonder. But Jess couldn't tell him, so Pat never found out. Pat and Jess went back to the farm to get some bales of hay for the sheep. Pat left Jess by the fire, and Dorothy gave him a saucer of milk. My goodness, how he purred! He almost purred his head off. Pat and Alf came back to warm themselves by the fire and have a good hot drink. They felt like purring, too. It was so good to be warm again. Later... Alf would go with the tractor to bring the sheep back to the farm. As they sat there, they heard something climbing the hill and going on past the farm with its diesel engine at full power and a swooshing sound going with it. That sounds like the snowplough, said Pat. I expect Peter Fogg's driving it. That means I can get on with these letters. I'd better be on my way. Thanks for helping with the sheep said Alf. Thanks for helping me to find Jess, said Pat. Cheerio. It was a long, cold journey for Pat that day, round all the frozen farms and cottages. Jess stayed curled up in his warm basket. When Pat was on his way home, he called in at Greendale Farm to see how the postman snowman was getting on. There was no sign of him, he was buried under a huge drift of snow. Poor fellow, said Pat. I hope he has some snow sheep to keep him warm under there. Then it was time to go home. That night, Jess stayed by the fireside. He didn't scratch at the door. <laughs> Not once. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early 